Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Evan with HPI Auto. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the 991.1 GT3 engine failure-ish. Just wanna go over a few things, uh, a repair that I have found and am doing currently. Uh, we know that the 991.1 GT3 engines are known to be grenades. The first question anybody asks when they look to buy one of these cars is, hey, is the engine updated? So, you know, we had some problems in the earlier ones where the rod bolts are breaking, sending rods through the case. But another issue with these cars is the finger followers. So this car came in and it had a very loud ticking noise on the passenger side valve cover area. So, you know, Porsche's guidelines per se are, you know, check engine light on for two different codes. This car had no check engine lights. You couldn't hear the noise inside the car, but if you were standing on the back side of the car, you could hear the ticking, the metal on metal sound. So, you know, now these cars are out of warranty, there's no longer the option of going and getting an engine without paying $70,000 for the engine by itself. I wanna figure out a way to fix these issues. And what I found is something that might end up being just a maintenance item instead of an actual engine rebuild. So I have the, basically the cams out of this car laid out. You'll see it's missing one cam. I'll get to that in a second. So. Your finger follower is, is attached to the hydraulic lifter. And this is a brand new one from Porsche. So it's a pretty simple. You got your lifter, your follower, you have your coating right there. And you have a little bit, a little clip right here that holds the follower onto the lifter. Little play, but once it's loaded up, that play is gone. So that's what a new one looks like. On this car, we're in two pieces. That little clip I was talking about broke and was hanging out down here. So what was happening was this follower was sitting there very loose and smacking the cam over and over again. And that's where that metallic sound was coming from. And as you can see, not only is the coating worn off, but it actually has a divot in the finger follower. So if we compare the two, it is a massive, massive difference. This one's nice and round. This one's flat. I went ahead and said, you know what? I'm pulling everything out and we're gonna see what's going on. On the exhaust cam, as you can see, a little wear there, a little bit of a divot. Going across, going down the line, you can see each one has wear all the way across the cam. Some worse than others, but nonetheless, all have wear. Intake side, wear, but not really much into the metal. So the cam shaft itself and the exhaust side on this lobe basically had a little divot in there that mimicked from this follower. So when set, so a new cam for this car is roughly $2,800 for a new cam. So 28 times four, you get the point. So there's a place that I know of that does, that does camshaft building, grinding, all that stuff. So I sent the cam out there. I uh, made a master mold off the other lobes and a lot of cams uh, like, you know, there's a lot of solid camshafts that you can, you know, weld, build up, and grind back down and make it perfect again. Well, on these cams, as you can, it's hard to tell in videos, but you can see around this lobe, that little gap. So this is a hollow camshaft with pressed on lobes going all the way down. So there's no way to introduce heat into this camshaft without breaking the actual hollow core. In order to get these lobes on from factory, more than likely what they're doing is a, a hot and cold, hot and cold, and to get these slid on where they need to be. As far as welding on these cams, that's out of the question. So then what happens is, what happens then is they measured it. So there's kind of a an unspoken level of which you can grind off of the cam on the lobe. And so this one was right at uh, 20 thousandths. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna grind that, they're gonna take the, mold off the main lobe, then grind down the lobe that's bad, 20 thousandths. And that 20 thousandths is not a big deal when you have the hydraulic lifters the way these are, because that's gonna fill that 20, that 20 uh, thousandths gap. And it's, it's gonna be no big deal at all. Now say if it were 60, 80 thousandths, that's when you would say, okay, I probably need to get a camshaft. But this car was running and driving when it came in here, no check engine lights, just noise. So we caught it in time to where in all reality, all we had to do was replace the follower and let it ride. The cam probably would have been fine, but I want to do things right. I want to make sure there's not going to be any misfires. So I went ahead and pulled all the cams, all the lifters, 
And these, you know, this side looks pretty good. I mean, the exhaust side, a little bit of wear, nothing crazy, but we're gonna go ahead and replace all the lifters, all the followers, and then get that Camry ground to where it's true and inspect again. This is the first one I've done because every other one has been in warranty and I haven't had the need to go inside these engines. But now that they're out of warranty, I wanna start seeing these. I'm trying to figure out, hey, are these engines bad or are they fixable? And what I'm finding out is, you know, that one little issue does not mean you need to go out and spend $75,000 parts alone for the engine, not counting the labor, the fluids, all that stuff. This is not gonna be a cheap maintenance item by no means, but much, much cheaper than a $70,000 engine. And, you know, if you're wanting to do this at home, if you want to, there are quite a few special tools. As you know, these valve covers are cam caps and they hold the cam shafts in. So when you pull those off, you gotta use these tools to hold those cams in place when you pull that valve cover off. And then once that's off, you still gotta remove the cams. So you gotta get, you know, there's a special, you know, 39 millimeter uh, wrench that goes in there and holds one side of the nut when this pulls the cam bolt off. You know, special tools, I can't find anywhere else, only Porsche. Even something simple like remove the crankshaft to get it in time, because it needs to be in time when you pull these cams out. Two separate little tools, only from Porsche. You know, the cam caps holders to hold the cams once you pull these rods out, timing tools. So if you're gonna do this job at home, you go ahead and expect to pay around $2,000 minimum uh, on specialty tools. Some stuff we already had, so I didn't have to do that. Either way, this is something I see that's extremely common on these cars, and now they're out of warranty, we can really start to figure out what's going on inside there. What can we do to alleviate these things happening in the future? And I think personally that this should be a, I don't know, depending on track mileage, how you drive, every 10, 15,000 miles, going in there and at least pulling the, the cam covers off and checking and make sure those, those lifters look good, there's nothing out of whack. And if you see a lot of, you know, a lot of wear on them, go ahead and replacing them. And that's gonna solve a lot of headache in the future and make these cars a lot less scary to buy out of warranty when you know there's a fix. Now this is this is all my, you know, my very little on this platform is my opinion. Uh, I think I'm right and I think that this is gonna be one of the ways to really prolong the, the life of this car and these GT3s is, is doing this maintenance step basically. And other than that, everything looks good. The cams look, there's no obsessive wear on the cams. The the bores look good. Everything looks fine. Just that one little part has failed. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions and comments about this, please reach out to us. Um, I love to hear from anybody else has dealt this issue, how they're handling in it. I know there's some companies making some solid rockers and stuff like that, but uh, I'd love to learn more about it. And uh, I look forward to doing a lot more of these builds and keeping these cars on the road because they're fantastic cars minus these little issues. I appreciate you guys watching. Please like and subscribe.